Hey everyone, I promised in my last video that uh, I was going to come back and do the review of the last of the cameras in my, in my OM collection and, and that's the uh, Olympus OM4. So, um, if you haven't watched the other ones, you may want to do that. It's not a prerequisite to watch this one. Um, OM4 is basically uh, the last of the um, OM cameras that came on the market. First there was the OM1 and its variants then OM2 then there was an OM3 that was kind of rare and it was the last of the mechanical ones and then OM4 came out um, <clears throat> which was more mass market produced there's also a TTI version that's a titanium body one they go for a little bit more money um, this also came in several colors, I, black obviously um, there's also a champagne version floating around that you can find on the internet as well Okay. I love this camera for several different reasons even though it does have some idiosyncrasies so let's talk about that just a little bit first of all it is um, an electronic camera so it does have some quirks that come along with electronics from the 80s uh, the one that probably bugs me the most is at least for mine um, it has a tendency to want to drain the battery especially if it's left on um, a particular shutter um, setting um, uh, other than the B or the 60 setting and also if you forget and you keep the uh, switch in the auto mode it shouldn't do that but there is a um, current leak if you will and so after a while the battery seems to run out um, since we're talking about batteries let me cover that a little bit and show you just like with any other Olympus you'll find the bat battery cover down here you undo it and uh, this one takes these uh, LR44 alkaline cells. They work fine for me. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. Um, but why the camera is worth shooting with is this excellent metering system that you can see up here on top. And it's kind of an evolution of what we talked about with the OM2, um, which is its ability to meter off the film plane. Um, in other words, <clears throat> it actually... Um, looks at the total amount of light that hits the film and there are diodes down here that measure that and then the exposure is adjusted as needed until the film is well exposed it actually comes in really handy if we, you're doing night work um, it I'm told does very well exposing for uh, night shots I have not tried that myself um, just because I have limited number of opportunities and too many cameras so uh, give it a go for yourselves and see if you like it or not okay so let's do a super quick review then um, we're just gonna start over here on the left and we're gonna work our work our way to the right um, so here you can make the um, ISO setting adjustment by basically lifting up this ring and then moving it about until you get to for instance whatever you want ISO 400 in this particular case and then over here you also have an exposure compensation dial which you can uh, move in either direction which gives you uh, uh, up to two and um, exposures under or overexposed this comes in handy if you're shooting snow or some scenes that are mostly white where uh, your camera is actually going to be thinking that it's 18% uh, gray and has a tendency to underexpose in those situations. Um, right next to it is the switch. Basically the manual operation um, is the off quote unquote. Auto is in a full auto mode and then if you push up it should beep and there should be a little red light that lights up here that's basically telling you that your battery is good so that's always a good thing to do before you go out and then I would still recommend to take some batteries with you if you wanna shoot something more seriously uh, this here is just a little uh, cover for the uh, flash PC sync cord um, so you can use that if there's a need for it um, otherwise um, there's a hot shoe up here as well for flash and um, yeah I think that's all that needs to be said about that. Um, you also have a diopter adjustment here. Um, so I think it probably goes to minus two, minus three diopter, and then plus one or two, where if you're slightly uh, short sighted, um, um, I mean, I'm sorry if you can't see very well and you have to 
wear glasses, you can use this to adjust. If you're like me and you're like almost at minus five, then you still have to have an additional adapter adjuster, adjustment or wear contacts just like with any other camera. Here is the uh, metering system that I was talking about. I'll cover that later. Um, here's your uh, film advance, um, which is pretty much like any other camera of this age. In order to put the film in, you pick up this guy and you pull up that pops the back open. Nothing exciting in there. You just put the film here. Um, you put the uh, lead in there. You kind of shove it in, make sure everything is running across these brackets like it should. You close it. You advance it a couple of times and you should be ready to go. Okay, as far as lenses go, pretty much the standard setup like any other OM camera. If you watch the other videos, if not, it's okay. Um, there's these two little um, extrusions, if you will, on the side that when you move them, you basically can uh, switch the shutter speeds. Um, then next comes the uh, lenses uh, focusing ring. And then just like with all the Zuiko lenses, the aperture is on top. And you can move that in either direction to adjust your aperture. Uh, to release it, um, the lenses, there's a little uh, silver extrusion here. And there's one down over here on the other side. When you press both of them together, you will actually then be able to twist the lens uh, counterclockwise to release it. And then back by aligning this... Um, yeah, it's, it's beeping on me because it's actually on. shouldn't be on while you do this. Um, red dot here and red dot here align. And then you just twist to work clockwise until it clicks in place. Okay. Um, as far as what else here, there's a timer here. I barely ever use it. I think you twist it over and then when you press it, it kind of electronically times itself back. Um... I'm not a huge depth of field preview guy. I think this does depth of field. Maybe not. It's okay. Sorry. Um, oh, right. The depth of field actually in these cameras is on the lens here. So when you press this, it actually uh, shuts the closes the aperture down to whatever setting you have it on. So you can see uh, how much focus you're going to have basically from the point at which you focus. The uh, smaller the aperture, like at f11, you're going to have more depth of field. Uh, bigger aperture like f1.8, less of a depth of field you're going to have. <clears throat> okay, so now let's uh, talk about the part that I think is fun about this camera. There's basically two ways to operate it. In the manual mode, um, if you look through the viewfinder, you will actually be told what the suggested range is at which um, you should adjust your aperture so that you get the... Um, shutter value that you set yourself to. So basically, let's say you set, you're set you at ISO 400 and you want to shoot at 2 50th of a second, so you set that and then you look inside and there's a little, like almost an LCD screen down at the bottom that's then going to tell you uh, as you move your aperture ring when you are in the range of what should be a good exposure. Similar to that needle concept in the older cameras, it's just been replaced electronically. So in some ways, it basically is a shutter uh, priority mode. But when you put the um, camera in auto, um, and even if you don't mess with any of these settings here, then the camera is going to give you a different kind of scale down the bottom, and it almost becomes aperture priority in that case, where you set the aperture to 5.6, let's say, and uh, then the camera will pick the shutter speed that goes along with that aperture of 5.6. Now the beautiful thing about this that makes it uh, exposed very well is there's this little button here that says spot and so the spot metering is basically taking a light measurement right off the center of what you're seeing through the same place where you usually focus with the manual camera. So you can take up to I believe eight spot measurements and then the camera calculates the average exposure value for those eight spot meters. So this comes in handy if you're shooting slide film or if you for instance are shooting a portrait and you know that left side of the face where you want to meter your expo exposure from, you can hit the spot on that particular spot and then the exposure is going to be for that particular place. Um, if you want to average out a very contrasty scene, you can hit a couple of spots up on the clouds and you can hit three spots down in the shadow. That's going to make it go a little bit more toward the shadow exposure. If you do three spots on the highlights and one down in the shadow, it's going to do it more in the highlights and so on. There is really a lot of combinations and it's kind of a unique thing to this OM camera. I haven't quite seen anything similar elsewhere. 
You can also put things in memory, which uh, when you press this over to the right, you actually have then told the camera to memorize that, and it's almost like a exposure lock. And if you want to uh, stop uh, keeping that in memory, you move it over to the right, and if you can see here it says clear, it will clear that memory setting, and then you're ready to go again. Also, there's these two quick link buttons, and I don't find them as useful, but like if you quickwise want to make sure that your highlights are protected, you press this, or if you want to expose for the shadows, you press that. So if you are exposing for the shadows, you're basically going to extend the amount of exposure, and if you are protecting the highlights, then you're going to make a shorter exposure, and then um, your highlights are going to look good. I believe that's how it works. Anyway, I I don't even see a need for it. I just like spot metering what I know that I want to make sure to expose well and just stick with that. So that's probably why I like this camera. Even though I got to tell you, I don't even use the spot metering that much. I just point and shoot with it. It's kind of fun for street photography. It's not that big. It's not really that loud. It's not, I don't know, not loud either, but from, I don't know, six feet distance, people usually can't even tell you're taking their photo. Um, yeah, one more thing, so when you're done with the roll, you press this button R here, that's a release for the film, and that allows you then to wind the film back. And you kind of wind it like you would with any of the cameras of this vintage. Um, I don't know what else to cover, I think that's about it for the main... Oh, let's cover one more thing, there's this little B-lock button here. So if you move the uh, uh, shutter ring over and over until you get to one second, then in order to get to 60 and B, you actually have to push the B-lock button and then that lets you get into, like, say, B. And B is um, the mode in which you press the shutter and it stays open until you depress it again. You can also do it with the shutter release. Um, attachment. Okay, I think that's it and I, I'm going to attach some photos that I've taken with this camera so you can see what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed it and have a good rest of the day.